JRPGs are the cream of the crop when it comes to video game genres. Are we all mature enough to collectively agree on this? I doubt anything will ever make me change my mind on this. They are the most diverse, the most creative, the most addictive, and have the best music. With that being said, there are a lot of stinkers out there, some of which I actually managed to get through and beat, and others proved to be a bit too stinky even for me, Mr. I literally have JRPG on my channel name guy. Picking on this game is too easy though, so for today, here are 5 JRPGs I couldn't stand to finish that aren't that piece of shit. Before that though, please consider subscribing and liking the video if you happen to enjoy. We're almost at a thousand subs by now, so let's try to get there by the end of the year. First on the list is Soccer Wars. This is a game I've had my eye on for a while now, and I finally found it on sale for like $8 this year, so I thought, what the hell, I'll buy it. I've heard nothing but good things about it after all. I went into this game expecting some high-intensity mecha action combat, accompanied by a lovable cast of characters, maybe a Yakuza-style world design considering they're reusing Yakuza animations, and I imagine the same engine, and maybe some romantic side content akin to what you'd find in a modern Persona game. But what I got instead was the experience of playing as some poor sap being held hostage and forced to play the role of arm candy to these five vixens. That's when I realized, this isn't a mecha action game with romantic side content, this is a dating game with a mecha action game as side content. You guys know that uh, Persona 4 meme where it goes, you're my first boyfriend, Jamal, or some shit like that. It's meant to be a joke in Persona's case, but that's exactly how I felt playing this game. And I can't even begin to explain to you how unlikable every single woman in this game is. They're rude, they can't take a joke, and the smallest thing sets them off. To whoever actually enjoys this game's romance, listen, I promise you, real women don't actually act this way. At least, I hope they don't in a dating context. It's a shame, because the art style and some of these character designs are fucking fire, but the second one of them opens their mouth and, oh, look at that, I suddenly lost my will to live. I refuse to believe this is an accurate depiction of how Japanese women behave. If it is, well... Uh, I now know why Japan has a birth rate problem. So yeah, after a playtime of about 5 hours and experiencing the first person dating mechanic thing, I decided to reclaim any self-respect I had left by putting my controller down and deleting this piece of shit off my PS5 forever. I want my $8 back, Sega. Now on to number 2. And this might come as a surprise to some people, uh, considering this game is often considered as being the best entry in the franchise. And the second game on this list is Tales of Vesperia. Very blasphemous, I know. But there is a caveat to this one. I played Vesperia for a total of 19 hours, and I was planning on seeing the game through to the end, even though I didn't find it to be that impressive from what I've played so far. But then, my PS4 died on me and I lost all of my save files. And there was no way I was going to pick this game back up because those first 19 hours I played were just, just so boring. The battle system was stiff and unsatisfying, which is weird because it's supposed to be a step up from Abyss's combat. The story felt completely aimless. The characters don't even know what's going on half the time or what their end goal is, so why would I care about them when there isn't even a hint of a driving force to be found? And while I agree that Yuri is potentially the best main character in the series, it comes at the cost of the rest of the cast being painfully generic at best. Story, characters, combat. These three things make a Tales game what it is. And this game, at least for the first 20 hours, severely underperformed in all three of these factors in my opinion. Fans of Vesperia say it gets better, and I believe them, but there is no way I'm going through that mediocre one-fourth of the game ever again. I even tried to get back into it this year, because uh, I had nothing else to play, but as soon as I got a taste of that combat again, I yeeted that disc out of my PS5 and made it never return. It, it, it's empty, don't worry. It felt like trying to breathe underwater. That, that's the most accurate description of this game's combat I can think of. Vesperia is far from the only Tales game I disliked, by the way. Uh, I could have also put uh, Symphonia Dawn of the New World on this list, but it, it's been 10 years. I honestly don't remember much from that game. And if you're wondering what Tales games I do respond to, my favorite Tales games are the two Zillia games and Graces. They're as close to perfect as JRPGs get. And Graces is getting a remaster soon, so make sure to cop that one when it drops. Trust me, it's a good time. Number three on the list is Valkyria Revolution. 
This is a unique one because unlike the other entries in this video, this is the only game where I've been warned time and time again on how awful the game is. Everyone and their mothers was bashing on this game non-stop because at the time, fans of the Valkyria Chronicles Tactical JRPG series were begging for a new mainline game, but instead, they got this janky action spin-off game. But I've never been one to let other people's opinions affect my judgement. From what I've seen, the game looked fine, so I ended up buying it just to judge it for myself. And at first, I found it to be enjoyable. It's got a lot of questionable mechanics, like how the permanent death feature, similar to the ones you'd find in a Fire Emblem game, turns your party members into literal ghosts with distorted voice lines for the rest of the game. Yes, you heard that right. But uh, despite that, the story was great, better than most JRPG storylines, I would say. Uh, I loved all the characters and their designs, or uh, liked, rather, <laughs> loves a strong word. And the gameplay, while a bit shallow and janky at times, was satisfying enough to keep me entertained across the 30 or so hours that I played. 30 hours is even enough time to almost finish the game, so what gives, right? This game sounds awesome, you might say. Well, not until you come across this fuckface right here. The second I lost to this bullshit boss and I realized that I had to restart the entire long ass mission I had to play through to get to him, that's when I was like, oh, oh, uh, okay, now I get it. No, no, this game sucks balls. I didn't really realize it until I was forced to replay an entire section of the game and because of how easy the game was up to this point. But the game's combat is just not that fun and it's barely functional once the difficulty sets in it sucks because i saw a lot of potential in valkyria revolution but i guess the team behind the game didn't believe that enough to give us a functional battle system it's a real shame <laughs> up next is kingdom hearts dream drop distance hd thinking about this game gives me the shivers i think i'm partially at fault for not enjoying this game as much uh, i came in expecting a battle system that's identical to the one found in kingdom hearts birth by sleep uh, easily the best uh, battle system in the series so i set the game on the highest difficulty because i mean i was a kingdom hearts expert at this point what I got instead was hordes of meat shields as enemies, a Kingdom Hearts 1 level of jank, no command synthesis, so barely any unique command decks, one of the worst monster taming mechanics I've ever experienced, a dumb pointless storyline that didn't need to exist, and some shitty parkour. Slow motion makes the game a complete joke. Seriously, don't even bother experimenting with any other mechanics in this game. Just spam slow motion attacks. There are walls and grinds everywhere in this game. They're easy to execute, they do a shit ton of damage, and there's no downside to using them. But what ultimately made me drop this game, no pun intended, is the fact that they expected us to play each and every single world twice. Once as Sora, once as Riku. The drop system, the little bar that switches between protagonists for you whenever it hits zero, speaks volumes on the game maker's incompetence. Did anyone play test this? No, seriously, did anyone play test this feature at all? Imagine being one hit away from beating a boss as one character, but then the bar hits zero and the game's like, you know what you need right, like, right this second? A little variety, woo. Right, now go back to playing with your little overly designed fluff balls. And yes, I do know that there are ways to counteract this, but just having this as a feature in the first place annoys me to no end and makes me lose confidence in the developer's ability to make reasonable decisions. I don't even remember how much time I spent on this game. I think I stopped at Tron's World, I think. The whole thing's become like a massive blur that I would rather keep repressed. Also, for some dumb reason, we're back to playing as little baby Sora and Riku, and we're back to big umbrella pants Sora, which is possibly one of the worst character designs I've ever seen, just with a different color palette. So yeah, nothing about this game encouraged me to keep going. None of the things I loved about Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep were found here. Th they should not have remastered this entry. They should have been embarrassed by it and left it to die on the 3DS where it belongs. Now, this last entry might uh, ruffle some feathers, but uh, please hear me out a bit before you get the pitchforks out. Number five is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. Or I guess it's more appropriate to say that I gave up on the Cold Steel games entirely after finishing Cold Steel 1 
and playing a bit of Cold Steel too. Because all four games in the series are direct continuations of the one that came before it. Now, honestly, I'm mostly going to be talking about my experience with the first game when I did finish, because I barely remember anything about the second game. All I know is that I dropped it because it was boring as fuck. And, and you have to understand, I played Cold Steel 2 right after finishing Persona 5 in 2017. So it, it had big shoes to fill, and not to mention it had to make up for blueballing me by the end of last game. Cold Steel has always been a peculiar JRPG to me. Because uh, I played Cold Steel 1 on release in 2015. Uh, I had no idea what this franchise was. I just bought this one because I thought it looked cool. I finished the game in around a month or so and thought it was mediocre at best. But a few years later, I find people hailing it as one of the pinnacles of the JRPG genre. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Did, did, did we play the same game? We got generic, bland, boring characters that don't know when to shut up, a generic story filled to the brim with anime cliches, predictable plot twists, miserable and miserable side quests in every corner, and the entire 60 hour adventure was just made to set up the future entries in the series, which is just dumb and an absolute waste of my time. Nothing about this game speaks to me. But maybe the battle system, maybe. It's all right, I guess. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I take that back, actually. The music in this game is incredible. But, but what do you expect? It's it's Falcom. But yeah, the game itself is just... just no. At one point while playing Cold Steel 1, uh, the game actually made me consider that I might have been getting a bit too old to be enjoying games at my age. I was 15. I don't even know why I bothered buying the second game, which is the one I should be talking about right now. When I eventually played it two years later though, uh, I'm like, wait, who are you again? What were we doing exactly? But what happened to Laura? Can I have her back now? Why is this cat talking to me? I hate saying this because I love Falcom's games and especially their music. Uh, they're always making new entries in the Legend of Heroes franchise, so many that I can't keep track of them anymore, but something tells me I should stick to only playing the East games from now on, just to preserve my mental health. And there you have it, 5 JRPGs I could not stand to finish. Hope I didn't offend anyone too much with some of these entries, but the, hey, that's bound to happen, so enjoy the games you like, and don't let anyone, including me, stop you from doing that. By the way, these are far from the only JRPGs I ended up dropping, so if you enjoyed and would like a part 2, or other gaming videos just like this, please be sure to hit like and consider subscribing, it really does help me out a lot. So, until next time guys, peace.